How are you guys doing? Recently I've been working on something I want to share with you guys, and that is Looking Glass Display Support for Virtual Studio VR. For those of you that are not familiar with Looking Glass, essentially it's a monitor that you can plug in and then use supporting 3D software to render anything you want to it and it will appear in 3D from any angle without needing goggles or anything like that. It's really cool so I wanted to add support for it for Virtual Studio. And what I'm about to show you guys how to do is how to use Virtual Studio VR to import content or create content uh, best suited for viewing on the Looking Glass display. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and import the file that I have on my hard drive, uh, which is called House, and this is a file that's free uh, that I downloaded from TurboSquid. So as you can see, first things first, it comes up a little bit black, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and select this thing and just brighten it up a little bit. That's a common issue with some OBJ files that will come in with the material settings kind of set a very dark color. Uh, after that, I'm going to take the light, I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to move it over to the side, and then I'm going to duplicate it to get more light into our scene, and then I'm going to drag that over to the opposing corner. Now, if you have a looking glass display plugged in like I do, you'll notice this HP button appearing in the upper right-hand corner next to your library. This button stands for hollow play, and you can click it and enable holographic display mirroring, which will automatically frame your scene and turn on this blue volumetric indicator to show you where your scene fits within the holographic uh, display. So the best way I can describe this is that everything that's inside of this blue cube or frustum will appear inside the looking glass display viewing volume and anything outside will be clipped. More importantly, this middle, middle plane right here is essentially is your focal plane, meaning that objects will appear best and most in focus when they are very close to that plane. So if you click the hollow play button, you can actually see a couple other additional settings here like scale, which will allow you to scale your content up and down. Angle, which will allow you to rotate the viewing angle easily of your volumetric view. And then pitch, which allows you to pitch up and down if you want to look at your content from an angle. Inset, kind of self-explanatory, it sets the camera inset to go both in, panning in, inward and away from your content uh, respectively. So this shows you how to import simple content for, for view on the looking glass display. Once you have your 3D scene set up the way you like it, all you have to do is go back to the library and it's automatically saved. And what's cool about that is now you can revisit the scene or share it with others that have looking glass displays or any other version of Virto Studio, and it will come back exactly the way that you have it set up. Now that I've shown you guys how to import files from scratch, I'd like to show you how to use Virto Studio's editing capabilities to do something a little bit more creative. So what I'm going to do here is open up an asset that might be familiar to some of you guys from the past, which is our sailboat model. And I'm going to use this to kind of build a larger scene idea around it, and we're going to see that updated in real time on the looking glass display as we're editing. So the first thing I'm probably going to want to do is take this sailboat and scale it down a little bit, because it's going to be a much smaller uh, component of a larger idea that I have. Then I'm going to use our terrain generator here and I'm going to pull in an image that I've downloaded that I know will look good for, uh, as a, uh, a terrain for kind of like an oceanic sea-like feel, which is called water. And I'm going to bump the resolution up to this pretty high. And then I'm going to uh, center the view, hit Control Plus, and zoom in a little bit and get an idea of what this looks like. So pretty cool. Uh, couple things I want to do. For starters, I think I'm going to take the seas and make them look a lot less rough because this would destroy our sailboat. So I'm just going to scale this down a little bit. And then I'm going to pop into edit mode and maybe smooth these polygons just a tad to kind of continue with that vibe of cal calmer seas. Maybe not that calm. Uh, let me undo some of this and just kind of go, yeah, maybe more like that. That looks cool. And I'm going to put a uh, reflective um, shader on this so that it looks more like uh, water. And in order to get this to look like water, I'm going to pick a blue cube map from one of our stock cube maps so that it has that kind of blue look, reflective look to it that I'm going for. So now that we have this set up the way I like it, I'm going to go ahead and adjust the holographic pitch so that while I'm modeling, I can kind of see it from a vantage point that, that I... Uh, that I want as I, as I look on the holographic display. So, okay, first things first, um, I'd like the water to be bigger. 
lower. And I'd like the sailboat to appear to be floating in the water. So I'm going to get closer to it, grab it, and move it down a tad. There we go. I might rotate it a little bit. So now we kind of have this appearance of a sea or a uh, sailboat or, you know, kind of ship floating uh, in the sea. So um, the idea I have is kind of dumb, but what I want to do is take this and essentially duplicate it. Move it off to the side a little bit. I want it to be a lot smaller and I want it to kind of be really in the middle of a turbulent sea here because my idea when we're done is that this is going to be the vantage point of our looking glass. So I'm going to rotate it, kind of make it look like it's really being swept up in the waves here. Yeah, I like that. And then maybe just make sure it's low enough to look like it's actually in the water. And what we're going to do here is we're going to click this boat and none of this is finalized yet, but I want to frame the selection to be essentially for the looking glass display to be from the vantage point of this boat. So let me just go ahead and adjust the angle here. And it's important that I adjust the angle so that I can actually see the other boat in the distance. Like that. Now that I have this set up the way I want it, I'm going to come out of here and I'm going to pick a protagonist to be on our boat. And what better choice than one of our little Danbo dudes from my other scene. So I'm just going to copy him to the clipboard and then go back into the sailboat and paste him into our scene. There he is. So he's too big, so I'm going to scale him down by a pretty significant factor. And I'm going to put him onto our boat. Control Shift C to center to him as the selection. And I can hold Control on the left keyboard and use the mouse to zoom in in increments that are a little bit more fine, which kind of helps me dial him in. So I want him to look like he's actually appearing on the boat, so I'm going to rotate him in alignment with that. There he is. Here's our sea-fearing captain. And I'd like to have one of his arms raised up, almost like he's pointing something, because what I'm going to eventually do is add a cannon to this scene and have the cannon aimed at our other ship. Now, there's several ways to accomplish this, but I find that the easiest way to do it is to simply pop into edit mode, grab a piece of his arm, go to select connected, and then go to face separate, pop out of edit mode, and now you have his arm as a separate model. And what this allows you to do is hit control shift P to turn on pivots, and then snap one of the pivots to the face closest to his arm, or to the end of his arm. So I'm going to turn on snapping here, and I'm going to say snap to faces, take this pivot, and pop it just to the uh, top part of his arm. And this pivot is used as a transform so that when I do something like rotate, his arm will simply rotate along that pivot. Now, before I finish the rotate, I'm going to want to hit, go ahead and turn snapping back off so that the result of the rotation doesn't get snapped. Now that I have been pointing at the ship, I'm going to essentially import a cannon from another scene that I grabbed off Turbo Squid and pop that onto the boat and have him essentially manning the cannon, and that'll be our scene. Now, this, unlike our other scene, this particular cannon was coming in from the uh, Turbo Squid without any. Um, textures at all. So all I really have to do in this case is just play with the material settings a little bit and I'll have this thing kind of appear in the way I want to. Just bump up the shininess factor, use a, a black color, maybe make the wheels a little bit uh, orange, or not orange, but brownish. So this model is actually a perfect example of a case where the original artist that created went way overboard with the number of polygons that they used. So what we're going to go ahead and do here, I mean, look, it's like 263,000 just for the wheels. We're going to essentially pop into edit mode on each of these objects and reduce poly count by as much as possible. Since this cannon is kind of something that's not critical to the entire scene, I think it's okay for us to drastically reduce the poly count on it and still retain a lot of its character. So we're going to do that just to make, 
make it so that we're not bringing in something so polygon dense it's really not necessary. Uh, the cannonballs, we can do that on them too, as long as they hold up. This doesn't work on every single mesh in the world, but usually it gives you pretty good results. And look, I mean, we just drastically reduced the number of polygons in this whole thing, and it still looks like a cannon, so I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to select everything and make sure I don't grab that light in the corner because we don't need any more lights in our scene just by control clicking that. And then I'm going to copy this to the clipboard, and then we're going to paste it into our host scene which has our sailboat. Let's see where that ended up, all the way over there. There's our cannon. And again, everything I'm doing is being reflected to, uh, to the looking glass display in real time, as you probably can see once I bring it into the uh, holographic volume. So, pretty sure our cannon's too big. I'm gonna go ahead and scale that down by a significant amount. And we don't want to kill our guy, so it's facing the wrong way. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate that to just face the other direction. One thing that would have made a little bit more sense would have been to group uh, this into one mesh so that I'm not messing around too much. So what I might do really quickly is uh, do that while I still have this selection. So I just undid to get back to my previous selection. And I'm going to go ahead and do mesh uh, merge. And that way I can just select any piece of the cannon and I got the whole thing. If you don't feel like using the rotation uh, transform handles, you can just move the camera in a way where you're essentially 90 degrees and you will always rotate about uh, the plane that you're facing. So that's another little trick if you don't want to mess around too much with certain aspects of how all this stuff is working. So that's one way to kind of artistically quick and dirty dial in what you're doing. And there we have it. He's essentially aiming at the ship. So I'm going to go ahead and frame this scene the way I want it on the actual holoplay settings. So that we can actually get a better view of him, I'm going to rotate him to face the ship a little bit. There, perfect. And here it is, our final scene of our sea battle with two sailboats and our little captain. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I'll be happy to make more tutorials in the future showing you guys how to do more cool cutting edge stuff like this. Thanks for watching.